the seven alien is kind of like the black swan for eclipses. Yeah, yeah. That shouldn't happen. Black Swan has left the model untenable. Hey, Brian. Well, it, another thing that's yeah, left the, uh, the uh, globe untenable is the Selenillion Eclipse. It's crazy how no one talks about that. <laughs> I, know, I know you've been on that. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be on it until someone defeats it because it's just as definite as the Black Swan. It's like, it, it, I love the Black Swan. If people have five minutes to listen, but if they have one minute, then you got to introduce the Selenillion. Because anything more, that's why the Black Swan is beautiful too, because it's a great representation of what you're saying. But if what, wasn't it you and like, me talking? If they don't, if they don't I, care I, about the radius, that's why you say, okay, you know how shapes and shadows work. You literally have to get that dumb. Right, was it you and me talking when we were talking about this? And I said the Selenillion is kind of like the black swan for eclipses. Yeah, yeah. That shouldn't happen, right? <laughs> Especially it, from the, right. the direction the shadows coming in. And that's a black swan for it. That's another black swan. If you look at it, it that it, way. It, what's funny? Right, that's is, how I see it. It, it shut Rumpus right the it, Like Rumpus came in. And he was just talking his usual circle. And I was like, yeah, but what is a Selenillion eclipse? And he's like, oh, I haven't looked into that in quite a while. I'm not saying I don't know what it is, but I have to look into it. How that's yeah. And then he, he said he actually had to go into his notes for that. I remember that. I was there. <laughs> I was like, okay, Rumpus. It's weird for Rumpus to admit that he doesn't know something. Uh, Elijah, can you go through what the Selenillion if I'm saying it correctly, probably not. Can you just explain to yeah. my audience what that is, please? Yeah, so um, in the heliocentric model, you have uh, the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon lined up like some billiard balls, right? So what it's supposed to be is you have uh, the Sun above the horizon. Well, actually, what it is is you have the Sun and the Moon above the horizon, and the Sun... the the earth is casting a shadow on the moon from the sun's light. The problem is both, um, both objects are in the sky. So it's impossible for the earth to be casting the shadow on the moon, but that's okay. That's not even the worst part. The worst part of it is that the shadow moves inverted. It's upside down. It's going the wrong way. Okay. Let me just break that down. Cause you kind of convoluted the two together. So I'll start with the heliocentric Sorry. version. The heliocentric version is to suggest that, like billiard balls lining up in a row, the middle ball is casting a shadow on the third ball. So the light from the first ball is interrupted by the second ball, which casts a shadow on the third ball. That is the assertion of an eclipse in the heliocentric model. However, we have this event called the Selenian, which is where you have both the sun and the moon above the horizon i.e. the Earth, claimed to be a ball in the heliocentric model, is no longer that second billiard ball obscuring the light causing the shadow. The further problem is the shadow itself moves in a completely different direction to the assertion that the heliocentric model would make if they were billiard balls causing shadows. So the two problems for the model is one, that you have both of them in a position where they wouldn't be causing any shadows. In fact, one should be lighting the other when apparently, according to them, you're getting a shadow. So it makes no sense in their model. Yeah, th there are certainly people who've, who've caught it in an unedited uh, transition. In other words, they just spin through 180 degrees and show that both of the sun and the moon are above the horizon when they take the the pictures of the the eclipse. So you know that's that's what I was hoping that was, but it's not. It, it was okay. <laughs> you know, you post something damning, and they say. Huh, even flat earth gifs are low quality and blurry. Word? That that's your concern? <laughs>
So it starts inside someone's house by the looks. He's presumably explaining, there you go, he's explaining how the lights cause the shadow with these representations of the claim to be planets. Then presumably he's going to move on to actually showing a clip of the sun and moon above the horizon any second, hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, this is what I've just, there we go, so there's the clips on the moon. Oh, unless it's demonstrating a point they want to make, then the quality is sort of nigh on irrelevant. It won't matter if it's produced by National Geographic on the same quality of camera as we use. That'll be perfectly acceptable. Uh, until it's demonstrated to be a black swan. <laughs> then it's a different story. <laughs> That's my favourite black swan, you know, and always will be. The original will always be the best because it's the original. But my favourite black swan is going to be the National Geographic one where they went out on a boat with a flag and showed how the bottom of the flag was being obscured but the horizon was behind the boat <laughs> perfect black swan <laughs> absolutely epic oh that's hilarious self-owned the earth is flat obviously and observably so the demonstrations that are going to be claimed to be a sphere are just going to expose how non-spherical the world is and that's no exception I posted two different pics of uh, the same, I believe it was the same Selenillion uh, caught by in two different places there in Master B. And whoever said that from Discord, yes, are correct. The entire model falls in upon itself, it implodes upon debunking the geometric horizon based on R. So yes, absolutely, all of their stellar observations all bunk immediately, all based on R also, correct. The whole model falls apart from this point forward. There's no going back, it's the end of the road for the globe model. So in mafia terminology, the black swan whacked the globe. Yeah. The full stop to the globe model, regardless of how long they claim it's been around or how long it's actually been around, the punctuation mark to that incorrect assertion that we stand on a spherical surface in a sky vacuum was punctuated by the black swan. That was the end of the road. The end of the game. The game arguing about whether or not we're standing on a model or not that sphere shaped ended with the black swan. From this point on it's just a slow drawn out death for that model in anybody's mind who still reifies it. Because the, mar the model becomes untenable upon exposing that lack of geometric horizon and no defense will be offered the claim that from someone like sean g that well i've never claimed it was a geometric horizon will only ever result in the same response welcome to flat earth for sure i mean like if we think that that's not true for the globers then then you'd be hard pressed to theorize on why they're not here right now it's not just this server it's the normie the normie globers that we usually talk to like they're disengaging from us <laughs> it's like, when have they ever done that they've had they have hours upon hours upon days to argue about nothing now they don't want to talk that's interesting it's because they've lost as I say, there'll be a few people that can't quite wrap their head around the fact that we're saying it's the end when everyone around them saying, oh, the black swan's meaningless, it's dead, it's not even a good argument anymore, it's been deep, but things like that. They'll listen to that and go, well, okay. But the, the guys on the Flat Earth debate are still saying that it's the end of the model, it's died. And that's a pretty bold claim. So they'll wander their way in and go, no, you don't understand. We can have a refracted horizon. And when we say welcome to Flat Earth, they, they don't quite understand why we're saying it. Scheduled to set at 708. I'm sorry, the sun will rise at 708. The moon is scheduled to set at 708. Yeah, I don't think they get the argument. No. Most of the time, they can't even repeat the argument. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, then every distance to horizon measurement must be no more than 1.22 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. That's the argument. I think, uh, I think a lot of the borders that they... They, they, they don't want to admit it, but I think a huge majority of them, and I mean 80% of them, didn't realise, maybe more than 80, didn't realise that the geometric horizon that boats were supposed to be going over was never visible. 
they a lot most of them ne- like this is news to them and they don't want to admit it a, a lot a lot of them i'm sure won't even want to talk, think about it themselves but i don't think they realize that i think they did re- they did really believe hardcore that there was this horizon that things were going over yeah they called it earth curve Way back when, yeah. <laughs> well, back in 2019. But they, they deny they said that. Now they deny they say that. That's correct. Now they say things like, well, the model isn't reality. That would be our argument. We don't have a geometric horizon. That would be our argument. But they're starting to power it back. Well, that would be optics. Yeah, that would be our argument. <laughs> not geometry. Not your model. Not eight inches per mile squared. Not physical obstruction at the horizon. All the things claimed by your geometry. All the things argued about with the mathematics of how much that earth curve is blocking things in the distance. All that is dead. Gone. You know what makes that extra special? Shout out to Timmy Clown. When he came in here and said, oh, you guys have all these reasons why things get obstructed from the bottom up. All these optical reasons, right? <laughs> and you deny the one reason that we know it is because it's physical Earth curve. Excellent. And later on, now we get yeah. told, oh, <laughs> you guys forgot about optics? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we've gone from a position where we're being told all of this obstruction is only accountable to one cause. And here it is. It's called Earth Curve Geometry. It's the physical obstruction called Earth Curve, otherwise known as a geometric horizon. Blocking things in the distance, we can qualify how much it matches our model. Look, there's this many feet and inches missing based on how much Earth Curve obstruction at the geometric horizon. We've got blocking things in the distance, and we can qualify it really accurately. Now, what? We don't see a geometric horizon. Well, what happened to, we see Earth curve blocking things in the distance, here's the geometry, here's how much it matches. Now they're relinquishing the very necessity their model utilises to claim Earth curve. So it is literally game over. There's no turning back. In the years to come, they won't be (laughs) giving us any pictures or videos of boats going over the curve because the black swan will follow. So they have nowhere to run. Well, it's also the end of the line because there was a point in the debate maybe two years ago where we appreciated that there was no longer going to be any claims of Earth's sphericity from the sky vacuum. Now, they only had two points of attack in terms of claiming that the Earth was a sphere. One, we've got pictures from space. Two, you can measure it at ground level. That was it. Those are their claims of sphericity in their entirety. Here's a picture of the globe. We know it's a globe. We've taken pictures of it. And if you want to measure it, Boats go over the horizon. Boats go over Earth curve. Here's the geometry. You can measure it yourself. Well, once we got rid of the sky vacuum, you can't have gas pressure without a container. If the sky was a vacuum, that would be out of space, as claimed in the heliocentric model. The gas we're breathing would fill that space, because gas expands in all directions. Entropy debunks the sky vacuum. So you no longer have any claims of pictures of Earth taken from a fake place. The place isn't real, so the pictures aren't real. End of argument for globe Earth assertions from space and NASA. Bye-bye. Totally debunked. Untenable also. So what we're left with? Endless arguments with the calculator, assuming R, them justifying their assumption of R, R pointing out that they're assuming R and them going, yeah, because we know it's a sphere. And then us debunking R. R giving you a physical geometric sphere edge for a horizon. Horizon being the single location where the sky meets the ground. And it's not the one in your model. We never see it. That's it. No more ground assertions that you can check for yourself. No more sky assertions given to you by your masters. That's the end of the model. There's no more assertions for globe Earth. That's why it's so quiet. What are they going to argue with? They can't argue with space. They can't argue from the ground. There's no more claims of globe Earth to pad out. There's no more things to put heliocentric smear of nonsense over the top of because we've rebutted it and ended in a draw. Well, it's just refraction. Yeah, until that refraction debunks the geometry you're basing the entire argument on. Then it's just an untenable uh, argument for a model that isn't what we see. 
No more assertions that we see what's in the model then. That's not reality. We don't have a geometric horizon. Well, there's nowhere to go. What are you going to claim Earth's sphericity with now? You don't have anything to claim it with. Literally nothing. Earth is obviously and observably flat. Yeah, I'm going to be stealing this rant. I'm going to be clipping it and playing it for all my family and friends. That was beautiful. Two. <laughs> I think it was an orthodox that came in and argued about Al Biruni. Oh yeah, I love Al Biruni. Yeah, great guy. Great methods. What's that? We don't have a geometric horizon, never can see it, always refracted, never straight lines, can't do geometry. Well, Al Biruni and his claim of an R value measurement is completely bunk then. Al Biruni you forgot is... about optics, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I forgot Sorry. about Fleur perspective, oh. the thing that they completely disavow on account of the fact that we only have earth curve geometry as the claim cause. We only have Earth curve sphericity. That's the only claim that causes things to disappear in the distance. Until you all deny it, then you don't have anything. At all. That's the best part. He says, what about optics? But Timmy Clown has 76 reasons, optical reasons, why things would disappear. <laughs> and only one reason from the globe side of the argument for why they disappear. That would be Earth curve, formerly known as the geometric horizon, now denied by the fundies. It's beautiful.